I want to let you in on a little secret. Ever since I can remember, whether it was taking a test in school or filling out a form I did last week, I will always start and get about a third of the way through. For some reason, I'll jump to the end. Something about that middle section just throws me for a loop. I have this kind of internal fear that I'll burn out throughout the process, and so I need to complete the important parts first. And that is just as true in painting as in the rest of my life filling out forms. I know that I can't do that. If I work that way, the painting will feel all out of whack. So today we're just going to shift over and paint the lips and the mustache, slowly just settle into the fact that this middle section might be a little overwhelming to me, but that's okay. I noticed in the mustache that I'm really layering in here. By that I mean I'm putting down raw umber, which is this dull brown in all reality. And this could easily kill out the section of the painting. But I also know that my mustache ultimately has some highlights in it. I have kind of this blondish brown mustache. We're not going to talk about it, but some hints of gray in there too. So to capture that, we're going to apply yellow ochre pale. And yellow ochre pale is this amazing color. And it's this color that we'll use as well when painting out the rest of the skin tones here. It has this vibrancy that you don't have in plain yellow ochre. Plain yellow ochre is a rich earthy tone. It has so many complex uses. We're doing something interesting here. I'm painting the lips and I'm not making those entirely red, like say I did with the touch of highlight on the nose. And that's because I want my nose and what will come later, this ear that I know will be bright red, have a lot of rich deep reds in it. I want those things to pop out and draw your eye throughout the painting. And because I know my lips aren't crazy flush, we apply red lipstick because our lips aren't incredibly red all the time. And in this case, I know that there are some cool undertones, so I'm applying in some cerulean blue to those lips. I'm making sure that there is a hint of that coolness, and then layering in some warm reds on top of that. By using burnt sienna as that kind of dark, deep shadow that we have. Burnt Sienna has a really rich warmth to it, and it also has quite a bit of translucency to it that play well in warm areas. And when we use that, we end up not sacrificing complexity in the shadows. If we'd used a raw umber, for example, those reds would really dull down and die out. I don't want that to happen here. I want the lips to still have this sense of fullness to them. And Burnt Sienna is the perfect match for that. And as we move out into the other existing skin tones of the face, I'm really focusing on movement and form here. I'm focusing on the different planar structures and how I can let color speak to form. That's a dialogue that I'm always kind of pursuing in my paintings. And it would be simple just to stick with one or two colors and lay this out in a hyper-realistic manner. But I don't like that, and I don't think that that creates this sense that the painting is alive. And so by using yellows and blues all throughout, even though it might be a heightened exaggeration of colors that I see there already, by having these really peaked out contrasting colors, you get the sense there there's some movement happening. And I'm not trying to capture myself perfectly here. That is never my goal in a painting. But I am trying to capture my likeness in a way that makes it feel as if I'm in the room, and the imperfections are what makes this painting feel like that. The life of an artist is showing up in the studio every day. Painting can teach us so much about life. I come in here and look at a blank canvas, and it's empty. For some silly, crazy reason, I want to make something beautiful out of that empty nothingness. I think that's my purpose. I think that's my goal in life, make something beautiful from something empty and broken. I think that's everybody's goal. It's what we do in all of the relationships that we have or any job that we have. We see things that aren't quite perfect, aren't quite matching up. And we say inwardly, something good can come from this. Let me try. And whether we enter into that, into despair or not, your effort of showing up and trying is saying deep down that you believe something good can come from this. Something more beautiful, something more wonderful can come from this. And that's the look that I'm trying to convey. 
You'll notice as well on the ear, I really applied a lot of rich reds, but I didn't provide a ton of detail. I tightened up the brush strokes and areas that I want you to focus in on, and then loosened them up in other areas like the ear that don't demand as much of your attention. And that's purposeful. I'm thinking of this painting like a story. How do I draw you in to that focal point of the story, to the main character? In this case, it's my eyes and nose. And then the kind of supporting characters are my ears, my lips, the mustache, you know, the wave of my hair. And it's important to think about the painting like this because when I lay down those first dark brushstrokes on the far side of the face, I'm already beginning to tell the story. This is what separates master painters the rich history of painting can teach us something. If you want something to feel cohesive, you have to really hone in on that from the beginning. You have to have an idea of where you're going, even if it's a loose idea. I love telling a story that's full of deep valleys and high peaks. I want the landscape, the world of this painting, the colors, the way that light plays and interweaves. I want that to tell a story. In this instance, when I lay down those dark shadows to begin with, it's dark and murky, but those shadows aren't there by themselves. They're not dull, they're complex. There's a lot of color happening there. We see reflective light happening in the shadows. And then we go and add, add midtones and highlights, and we realize the story is full of contrast. There's a lot of movement. There's rich, rich interplay between light and shadow happening here. That's the story that I want to tell. I tried to apply the same structure in the hair. I could have easily tried to get picture perfect and paint it strand by strand, but instead I view hair as a vast ocean where various waves are crashing into each other. I see the full volume of someone's hair as a collection of waves. I think it's easier to paint that way. It makes more sense to me. And I grew up on the coastline, so it speaks to my heart and soul. It frees me up because you don't have to get every little detail. Instead, you get to paint the structure of it, apply generous brush strokes, have raw umber laid down, and then bring those blues back in because, again, they're the highlights that we use in the mustache, and they're perfect for this. They really make things pop. And I apply that in various ways. Sometimes it's rich points, like here, where it's kind of laid down in an almost solid way. Then other moments, I'll just gently layer that blue on top to convey that there's reflective light happening. And something that's also important to note here, I include loose strands of hair. In my mind, it's the imperfections that you have in a painting, or even in life, that makes something really rich and real. It's people's imperfections that make us love them. I think it's what makes us unique. And along the way, we notice that the figure, myself, because it's a self-portrait, has this concerned look. And I'm not looking to capture anger or anything in particular. I, <laughs> I'm looking at a lot of other artists, Rembrandt and Velasquez, they all have these really intense self-portraits. I think that's because when you're in here in the studio, when you're an artist, you care a lot about your craft. I hope that you know this. When you care deeply about something, you're very intent and intense about that care. And that's the expression that I wanted to capture. It's the expression I have when I'm looking at a painting for hours on end because I want to make every brushstroke, every color matter. It's an involved process, one that I take very seriously and I pour into my paintings. But we can't stay in the skin tones forever. We need to move down here into the shirt. And it's important to note here that we need to apply the same principles in the face and in the hair to the shirt and eventually to the background. And with the shirt, I wanted to use broader brushstrokes. I wanted to feel free to allow it to move. And because I'm painting a white shirt, that white will have cool undertones. So using a brownish green, something that lends more towards that cool side of green is gonna be perfect here. And I broke this almost into two sections and you can see there's a clear line happening from the collar down. And on one side we have kind of our shadowed gray area. So I made some grays, some almost shadowy highlights, some shadowy darks, and some shadowy midtones, all within that range. And then likewise over in the highlights. And my favorite part of the shirt, actually, as much as I love laying down all this color, is a spot of light that gets caught over here in the shadow. And honestly, this is what I love to do with any of my paintings. 
because I play with light so much. I'm looking at the way it falls and lands. So this light over in the shadow is intentional. It says that this shirt is pushing forward in a way that creates this break in the tension. And you'll see that it's not just happening here in the shirt, it happens in the face too. It happens in the corner of my mouth. It happens over there on my lower cheek, underneath my nose and above the mustache, where light dances over. And we just get a glimpse of it over here, totally surrounded by deep, dark colors. And even where my eye is, we see shadow all around. And yet, even there, there's light touching my upper and lower eyelid. It makes my eye and touches of that, of that side of the face really come to the foreground, really shine through. It's like being outside on a cloudy, gloomy, rainy day and looking up and noticing a peak, a speck of sunlight shooting through the clouds. It's miraculous, it's magical, it's wonderful. That's what I love to play with in any painting. And so that's what I'm looking to capture here. And the shirt just serves to emphasize what's already happening in the face. And by laying in the rest of the whites in a complex way, not just laying down titanium white, but laying down grays and midtones, we say that this shirt has its own personality. It flows and moves in a way that's really distinct. And last but not least is the background. It's, it's the part of the story that I want to wrap up. But with any good ending, you have to put a lot of effort into it or else it will fall flat. And speaking of falling flat, it could be so easy to just lay a solid brown background. But I don't want to do that. Honestly, I'm actually drawing inspiration from a John Singer Sargent painting. It's a painting that I've taken a lot of inspiration from and have painted myself in the past. You'll see that in this painting, there's quite a bit of life in the background, from greens to browns to rich brushstrokes full of movement. It's a part of the story that matters quite a bit. Let me set that aside real quick. And I wanted to tell that story here in my own way. What looks like a simple, solid background is actually a bit more complex. I have raw umber really heavily laid in here that then speaks to the raw umber on the far side up here in the corner that I laid down and through my hair. So it creates this diagonal across this way. Likewise, that raw umber transitions up into some greens. Those greens that really peek through highlight this side of my face. But those greens I've also placed over here. So there's a diagonal movement of greens in the background this way, again, drawing your eye towards the center. And last but not least, I applied in some Payne's gray, a kind of a, a gray black into the mixture and then did so back over here and over on the, the top of the shoulder. By doing so, I've created this movement in the background that shifts both this way and it creates these diagonal pulls that though they are subtle, they're still there. They're working with your eye to pull you in towards center. And the background isn't overly dark. There's some lightness to it. It's a darkness that feels cohesive and whole with the rest of the painting. In the end, I, I love this. Quite proud of this painting. I didn't know how it would turn out at the beginning. Every story begins with a blank page, or in the case of painting, well, every painting begins with a blank canvas but we really made something of it. And I wanted you in here with me in the studio. I'm so glad you joined me in here in the studio. I think the studio is a place that a lot of artists hide in, but I wanna open the door. Art can teach us so much about life, it teaches us how to tell a story, how to live in that story well. And I think that we did just that. And if you wanna buy this painting or anything like it, go check out my website. There's plenty of work there. And if you wanna learn more, follow me on Patreon. I meet with my patrons every week in a live video session, walking through art and how I create my paintings in more depth and detail. I'd love to have you there. But stick around because I have plenty of more stories to share and I can't wait for you to hear them. <laughs>